Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to my blog Sumut. Uh, as part of my fellowship with the uh, HPHR journal, uh, this week I'll be discussing the issue of uh, medical negligence towards Palestinian prisoners in Israeli prisons. Uh, joining us today is Melina Ansari, the International Advocacy Officer at Adamir, a human rights organization based in Palestine. Welcome, Melina. It's great to have you here with us today. Thank you for inviting me and allowing us the platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, if we can start by asking you to tell us uh, briefly about Adamir and its scope of work. Um, so, Adamir Prisoner Support and Human Rights Association is a Palestinian non governmental human rights organization. Um, that works to support and advocate on behalf of Palestinian political prisoners held both in Israeli and Palestinian prisons. Um, we provide free legal aid uh, to prisoners. Um, we advocate on their behalf on a national and an international level. And we work to put an end uh, to the various violations of prisoners' rights through monitoring, legal procedures, and solidarity campaigns. That's a lot of work <laughs> that you're working on. Okay, and um, can you tell us about the general uh, and current situation of uh, Palestinian prisoners uh, in Israeli prisons? Um, I'll start first with brief statistics um, in order to have a, like a brief overview about the Palestinian political prisoners. And then I'll talk a bit about the policies against um, political prisoners. Um, to begin with, there are 4,550 um, 4, Palestinian political prisoners currently held in Israeli occupation prisons. Of them are 170 children and 32 women. Um, this also includes 500 uh, six Pal uh, sick Palestinian prisoners, um, some who have suffered um, from gunshot wounds during their brutal um, and violent arrest, and others are diagnosed with chronic illnesses and malignant tumors, um, and others have also physical uh, disabilities. Um, there are 200 um, prisoners that suffer from chronic illnesses. Of them are 10 Palestinian female prisoners. Um, in order to understand how Palestinians end up in Israeli occupation prisons, we should bear in mind that the Israeli occupation um, issues military orders um, that um, uh, their main goal is to maintain control over the Palestinian people. These military orders criminalize almost every aspect of a Palestinian's daily life. This includes um, any form of exercise of political, cultural or social rights. Um, any rights related to land or property, rights to movement, freedom of expression and assembly. Um, in a way, it has criminalized all aspects. Um, and hence, Palestinian civilians are brought before Israeli military courts to prosecute them with um, exaggerated sentences and, and very um, high fines that, that also play a tool um, to make the lives of Palestinians um, a bit more difficult than what it is under the occupation. Um, um, Israel also relies on the policy of administrative detention, uh, which, which allows the Israeli occupation to detain Palestinians based on secret information um, that is not provided or disclosed to the detainee themselves or their lawyers. Um, administrative detention um, is on, other than it's based on secret files, um, it is also based on no charges or no actual trial. Um, and, this, um, and Palestinians could be detained for an indefinite amount of time. Um, currently, there are 500 Palestinian prisoners who are under detention without trial or charges. Um, of them are four Palestinian children under the age of 18. Um, the Israeli occupation also systematically um, puts Palestinian detainees, regardless of their age or gender or any existing health conditions, under severe physical and psychological torture and ill treatment. In many cases, it is during interrogation when the Israeli interrogators want to extract confessions, uh, conf confessions from the, the prisoners. 
Um, the physical assault um, uh, forms includes harsh beatings, stress positions for prolonged um, hours, um, um, physical assault, um, and also sleep deprivation. Psychological torture and ill treatment also includes uh, verbal assaults um, and threats of arresting family members and subjecting them to um, harsh interrogation techniques. Um, Palestinian women, in addition to this, also face compounding gender abuses um, and the Israeli occupation leverages their, um, their, their need for certain feminine products during interrogation as a mean to pressure them more during interrogation. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, the situation is clearly very bad and uh, keeps on getting worse and worse. And um, like you said, this is a specific case where it's not a normal um, a political prisoner. They're actually just civilians uh, who are being targeted and uh, tortured. Um, so mm. can you also tell us about um, the living conditions in terms of, um, you know, how, are, how is the situation inside the prison? Um, is it overcrowded or what's the situation like? Um, first, it's important to note that there are 17 Israeli occupation prisons that um, Palestinians are incarcerated in. Only one prison, which is Ofer Israeli prison, is located inside the occupied Palestinian territory, um, which means the rest of the, the prisons are located outside the occupied territory. And just to note, this is um, illegal under international law because it's considered as forcible transfer of the occupied people outside of the occupied territory. Um, and only Ofer prison is located inside. So when we talk about 4,550 uh, 4, prisoners, most of them are illegally transferred inside um, the territory of Israel. Um, that's a general note. But to be more specific, Palestinians inside prison endure um, extreme incarceration conditions um, in overcrowded and narrow small prison rooms that lack um, the basic, sorry, that lack the basic minimum standards of adequate living. Um, many prison rooms retain humidity, which along with the lack of natural ventilation sources like windows leads to many prisoners suffering from num numerous um, skin diseases and infections. Um, prisoners in most Israeli prisons also suffer from the extreme low temperature um, inside prison during winter um, and with the lack of sufficient um, blankets or cover-ups inside their rooms, um, they are subjected to this um, low temperature during the cold. The Israeli prison services do not allow um, blankets inside um, that are, are, are thick and heavy but um, limit the, the, blank, the, the blankets that are accessible inside prison to thin and very light uh, blankets. Um, prisons specifically, uh, prisoners specifically in desert prisons like Nafha and Al Naqab also suffer from the extreme heat um, due to the desert conditions. Um, and of course, the Israeli prison services do not um, provide any form of, of ventilation or air conditioning inside prisons. Um, not only, um, this is in addition to the insufficient food that is um, provided to the prisoners, um, many of the, the necessary equipments, the necessary equipments that the prisoners need aren't provided from the prison itself, but are um, provided in the prison canteens. Um, which allow the prisoners to buy these products on their own. And it's important to note that there is economic um, um, abuse of the prisoners in, in this section because the prison canteens and um, the prices there are almost double the regular prices outside prison. Um, so not only does the Israeli occupation place Palestinians under extreme living conditions, but they also deliberately uh, make their lives harder through regular um, and repeated raids um, through um, Israeli special units inside prison. These special units um, terrorize and assault prisoners even when they are inside prison. They use tear gas and pepper spray and physical assault for prisoners while they are still enduring harsh conditions inside prison. 
um, on a regular basis that they deploy these special units um, a lot of prisoners are subjected to um, ill treatment and there was a case in 2019 when one prisoner passed away after a violent raiding by the Israeli special units um, to a Naqab prison. Um, of course, uh, the Israeli occupation is never held accountable for these circumstances or situations. Um, there is still um, a, an atmosphere of, of, of uh, impunity that it enjoys, which allows it to continue on um, putting prisoners in such circumstances. Um, these conditions that the, the prisoners are subjected to expose Israel's relentless effort to abuse the, the prisoners and deny them uh, their most basic standard uh, right to a dignified life, um, including providing facilities that are equipped with the proper medical services. Um, the Israeli occupation uses medical, ne ne um, medical care as part of, the, of to leverage on on Palestinian prisoners, so so they use it in order to um, enforce more pressure on them through stalling necessary testing or withholding vital medical information and refusing to um, refusing to uh, the entry of necessary medication to the prisoners when they also um, deny these medication to be provided by themselves. So in a way, it's a whole cycle that mm -hmm. the prisoners have to go through. I'm sorry, I will just briefly talk about a Ramle prison clinic sure. uh, where most sick Palestinian prisoners um, are transferred to. Um, a Ramle prison clinic is, should not be um, named clinic as well. It is mainly a prison uh, with minimal medical staff uh, that are there. Um, so in the Ramle, um, the Palestinian sick prisoners are still subjected to medical neglect and are not afforded the proper uh, treatment nor the proper diagnosis. Um, in many cases, um, the clinic only offers prisoners painkillers um, regardless of, uh, of their diagnosis or what the disease is. And um, the main or the, the majority of prisoners are given painkillers as a way to silence the pain. But it does not properly diagnose the pain or what's going on with the prisoners. And in many cases, the painkillers worsen the conditions instead of um, trying to um, make prisoners feel better um, during their, their sickness. So about 14 to 16 prisoners stay permanently in the Ramle. These are the, the, the prisoners that require constant monitoring and constant testing of their health condition. Um, what the Israeli occupation does is that it allows one to two healthy Palestinian prisoners to stay in the Ramle clinic um, to facilitate and help the ill prisoners um, move around and to provide them with primary medical care. Um, this showcases how the Israeli prison services uh, avoids its responsibility and rely on other prisoners to take care of the ill ones. Um, the clinic, as I mentioned, it does not employ a full professional medical staff. So ill prisoners are often transferred to um, civilian Israeli hospitals. But for this transportation to happen, it, it requires a long delays. Uh, it, it requires long delays and long repeated requests from the prisoners or the organizations such as Adomir to um, request um, the transfer of prisoners. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, uh, the situation is um, uh, really unbelievable. And like I said, it's a cycle. So not only um, that they're making these prisoners sick in the first place, um, but they're also denying their access to healthcare, health facilities, uh, even healthcare personnel. Um, so uh, at Damir, as you said, uh, you're helping them get uh, permits. So um, what else can you tell us about this uh, medical negligence or um, maybe what you're doing at Adamir in that? Um, I will a bit focus on another cases of mm -hmm. uh, specific cases of medical neglect, if, if that's OK. Yeah, sure. um, just to begin with, without receiving um, the immediate medical care uh, to stabilize their conditions, many Palestinian prisoners fall victims of Israel's deliberate medical negligence. 
Um, in 2020, four Palestinian prisoners passed away inside prison due to medical neglect. Um, I'll briefly go into the case of Kamal Abu Wa'ir, um, who's one of these victims of uh, deliberate medical neglect. Kamal was, is a 46-year-old uh, uh, man from uh, Palestinian from Jenin. He was arrested in 2003 and sentenced to six life sentences and 50 years in prison. Um, during his incarceration, Kamal, Kamal Abu Ar was diagnosed with vocal cord cancer, um, escalating the Israeli prison services, humiliating and degrading treatment to him. Um, to attend his hospital visits, uh, Kamal was always cuffed with his hands and feet and brought to the prisons from Galbua to the hospital. And it's important to bear in mind that the transfer of Palestinian prisoners is not an easy travel at all. Um, they are transported through something that is called the Bosta, which is a, a, a metal vehicle um, that is completely shaded and does not have any forms of natural ventilation, as I mentioned, like, like windows. Um, so even during his chemotherapy sessions, Kamal would be cuffed by his hands and feet on, um, on the, the prison, uh, on the hospital bed. Um, in July 2020, uh, he was admitted to the hospital and underwent surgery to insert a, um, a breathing tube, um, during which he, he was infected with COVID. Um, even though Kamal recovered from COVID, um, his medical condition continued to, de to, de to, to, to worsen um, until he passed away on November 10th, 2020. Um, so in a way, this part of the medical stalling and the ill-treatment of the prisoners, when a prisoner is sentenced to life sentences, they are not even afforded the, the dignity to be treated well um, till the end or to be released as he suffers from vocal cord cancer. He suffered from vocal cancer. So why it's important to mention Kamal's case as well is till this day, the Israeli occupation withhold his body um, since he passed away in November, 2020. Um, it's not the only um, withheld body by the Israeli occupation. Currently, there are seven prisoners um, that the Israeli occupation refuses to um, uh, um, provide the families with their bodies for a proper burial for, for them. Um, one of these seven prisoners is Anis Dawleh, who passed away back in 1980. Until now, his body is, is withheld in Israeli um, prison fridges um, in harsh conditions. Um, and this, we do bear in mind that it is a, a sort of psychological torture to the family members of the detainees, because without properly seeing the body of their beloved ones and without properly burying them, they cannot move forward with their lives, knowing that um, their, their bodies is held in, in freezers and numbered. Mm -hmm. um, sorry if I'm taking too long, but I would like to also focus on another case of Amal Nakhle, who is a sure. Palestinian child. He is 17 years old. Um, Amal's medical reports say that uh, a report that he suffers from a rare disease, and excuse me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, it's uh, myasthenia my my gravis, um, which requires special medical care, including regular medication and constant monitoring of his decision. Amal Nakhle, the 17-year-old boy, was first was arrested in, in the beginning of January 2021, and till now, till December, which is almost a year, he's been held under administrative detention. So this sick child who uh, imposes zero threat on the Israeli occupation is held for a, a whole year under secret information um, that is not disclosed to, to neither Amal or, or his lawyer. Um, so in a way, Al-Damir, as a, the legal representative of Amal, we were not able to assist his case in any way possible because we cannot go into trial not knowing what the charges are against him. The Israeli prosecutor keeps mentioning that Amal imposes a threat to the security of the region, while Amal's medical files constantly say that he suffers from health conditions and health implications that make breathing, even breathing on him, difficult. So here we see how the arbitrary nature of administrative detention is used 
to detain Palestinians, even when they are children and in vulnerable health conditions. Um, I would just also mention the case of Jamal Zaid. Um, Jamal Zaid uh, was arrested on the 15th of September 2021. Um, he suffers from kidney failure, which requires daily dialysis um, for his condition. Um, when he was arrested in, in, on the 15th of September, there was a, a session for his dialysis to take place. Um, however, the Israeli occupation detained him and brought him to a military base near Aram and, and continued on detaining him without providing any medical care for him, even when they knew that he was um, suffering from kidney failure and needed dialysis at that moment. Um, after prolonged hours of detention, he was transferred to Chari Tzedek Hospital, uh, where they conducted tests for him and he underwent a dialysis session. But he remained in the hospital later in the evening and then was transferred to prison. Why I'm mentioning the case of uh, Jamal Zaid is because Jamal Zaid is also under administrative detention. So there is no actual charges against him and there are no trial happening for Jamal, but yet he is now um, 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 detained in a Ramle prison clinic. And as I talked about Ramle prison clinic, it lacks any minimum, any adequate minimum standards of, of living in addition to uh, deliberate medical care and, and not efficient um, medical supplies there. Um, so he's undergoing dialysis where he, he's being transferred to a civilian hospital every, uh, three times a week to go dialysis. And as we mentioned, the transfer of, of the prisoners from one prison to a, a hospital is a whole harsh um, trip by itself. Um, these are several cases, but yani, there is no limit to the Israeli occupation's um, medical neglect, whether it is Palestinian women as well. As, as we remember the case of Anhar Dik, um, she was a Palestinian prison, a prisoner who was pregnant um, inside um, while she, she was arrested while being pregnant and continued her detention as she as she entered her ninth month of pregnancy the Israeli occupation at first refused completely to release her on bail um, just in order to um, give birth to her child and then um, leave the child with her for a few years and um, the Israeli occupation in the beginning insisted that um, Anhar stays under detention even during her birth. And we have documented several cases where Palestinian women, while giving birth, are still shackled with their hands and feet to the prison bed while literally giving birth. Um, so the bizarreness and arbitrariness arbitrary, arbitrary of the, the medical neglect knows absolutely no bounds by the Israeli occupation. Mm -hmm. These are all uh, very depressing stories. And um, like you said, it's just uh, different factors getting into it. Uh, even on the legal level, it's challenging. Um, so it's, uh, it's really very sad to see that uh, they're facing all of this uh, uh, inhumane conditions. Uh, and like you said, also uh, their families uh, are also targeted by this. Okay, so um, if we want to uh, end with a slightly better note, um, what do you think uh, the solutions can be or what do you recommend uh, on advocacy, research or policy levels uh, in order to improve these uh, conditions or actually prevent this uh, deliberate medical neglect? Um, you know, I, I really thought about recommendations or ending it on a positive note, but to be completely real and to the point, um, in order to better improve the conditions of Palestinian prisoners, there should be an end to the Israeli occupation as a whole. Um, just to mention, like, Damir's efforts in, Israeli, um, in the Israeli judicial system is redundant. We try to file complaints on behalf of the Palestinians in Israeli military courts and in Israeli civil courts, but we're constantly faced with refusal and denying of basic rights. Um, even during the COVID pandemic, this did not deter the Israeli occupation from increasing the arrests of Palestinians. 
we submitted an appeal in order to lessen the amount of, of prisoners inside one prison cell, but the Israeli Supreme Court rejected our petition and said that um, um, like spacing between prisoners and the guidelines of the Israeli Health Ministry does not um, need to be implemented inside prisons because prisoners should not be given that um, privilege of of uh, having efficient spaces inside prisons. So there is no justice for Palestinians um, in judicial systems by the Israeli occupation. This is a complete uh, honest and real case. Um, and this is when we say um, it is on the international community and the international and the states to take action against the occupation. Um, they have given Israel an atmosphere of impunity by their constant silencing and we need the silencing to end. We need states or organizations to take action and hold Israel accountable. Just a small um, recommendation how organizations or individuals can, take, can help. For example, um, medical associations um, should or have a responsibility as medical staff to provide proper health care to all individuals. And I think organizations that work with medical doctors that are Israelis also have a role to um, put pressure on the medical doctors and the medical staff um, to abide by their principles and their roles as doctors and medical staff. There was a case um, where a female prisoner was raped by a prison doctor. And this case would not have happened if the, the, the medical community on an international level stood against the role of medical doctors in the torture and ill treatment of prisoners. At the end of the day, the prisoner is brought before a doctor. The doctor should not be an Israeli occupation soldier. Sh they should not be a member of the army. They are doctors who have sworn allegiance that they will provide care to the people. Um, so in a way, I'm trying to say um, Israel does not listen to pressure in general, but increased pressure from all aspects, whether they are doctors or universities or states of influence, um, should be the, the, the virtue for Palestinians to seek justice and, and reach their basic rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, um, as long as there's occupation, then this is the root cause of all the problems um, that Palestinians are facing and uh, as well as the Palestinian prisoners. Okay, so thank you, uh, Melina. You shared uh, really important information. Um, you shed light on the catastrophic situation of these prisoners and um, particularly towards uh, the issue of their health and medical negligence. Um, and uh, we hope that uh, Israel would be uh, held accountable, but more importantly, that occupation would end and um, so that uh, all Palestinians can, can live in dignity and uh, have healthy lives. That's our only goal and aim, mm -hmm. inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Melina. You're welcome.